Today, I'm joined in by Israel Levant, who is the publisher of Rebel News. He closely worked with Tommy Robinson for several years. Ezra Levant, thank you so much for joining in on CNN News 18. Now, you know, what's your understanding of Tommy Robinson and his entire movement? Do you see anything objectionable with Robinson's movement? Well, Tommy Robinson has been vilified by the mainstream media, by most political parties, and frankly, the police arrest him so frequently, they're probably on a first-name basis with him. But Tommy Robinson speaks for a large part of the United Kingdom that doesn't see itself reflected in those institutions, not in Parliament, not in the media. He is part of the white working class majority, I suppose, and they're not reflected in Parliament. Every other group, according to some people, has a preference, has a benefit, has affirmative action. Look at Rishi Sunak, the former prime minister, someone uh, of an Indian ancestry. And so there's a group of people in the UK who feel like the political establishment ignores them and in fact calls English people racist. When you think about it, the English people themselves, who are the indigenous people to the UK, they are uh, being pressured and in sometimes uh, there's conflicts with the establishment and with certain new immigrant communities. I, I think that Tommy Robinson may be rough around the edges, but he speaks for a part of the UK that's feeling ignored. Ezra, why does Robinson and his movement believe that UK's Labour Party government and po the police of UK are endangering the country? And why does Tommy Robinson claim that they care more about people coming to the UK from other countries than the children of Britain? What's your understanding? One of Tommy Robinson's allegations is that the police engage in two-tier policing, one standard when it's working class white British and another, an, another standard when it's immigrants to the UK. Let me give you an example. There have been large protests in London, tens of thousands of people in support of Hamas. They're chanting uh, anti-Semitic slogans. They're supporting terrorist groups and the police have a very light touch. But when white working class Brits have similar protests, for example, three young girls were recently murdered in, in an outrageous crime, when white working class Brits have uh, a protest about that, the police come in swinging batons. And uh, it's hard not to notice the difference in policing, and it appears that the police are so politically correct, they're so woke, that they don't feel they should be using any force against visible minorities. So when it's a white protester, out come the batons and the pepper spray. But if it's a new uh, immigrant to the UK, not even someone who's a citizen yet, the police don't say a word. They are afraid, the police are afraid of being called racist if they enforce the law evenly. That's a perception by many people. Ezra, Rebel News was there on 27th of July to cover Tommy Robinson's rally at the Trafalgar Square. Uh, during the rally, multiple people were interviewed by Rebel News about immigration and the movement currently taking place in the UK. What insights emerged from your reportage? Thank you. Our reporter Alexa Lavoie was on the ground and she said a few things. First of all, it was very large. Uh, some estimates put it over 50,000 people. I saw one newspaper that doesn't even like Tommy Robinson said 100,000 were there. The second thing to note is it was so peaceful. When you have 50 or 100,000 people, you might have a few incidents around the margins, but it was a very peaceful, very positive, family-friendly event. The third thing is it was multiracial, especially the speakers on stage. What I mean by that, and this was an emphasis that Tommy Robinson made, is that you can be British and black and brown and other races or religions to be British is about loving British history and culture and the rule of law. So I think Tommy went to great pains to show that this is not a white only movement, that to be British, you can be other races, but you have to put the UK first. And I think that's just simply called nationalism. I think many countries have nationalism. It can be a very positive thing. Uh, Japan has it. 
I, I dare say in some ways India has it. France for the French, Italy for the Italians. Tommy wants England for the English, but he believes that you can become English even if you're from another country. Ezra, Tommy Robinson has been tweeting about scenes from Southport to the scenes at the Downing Street. He says the country is at boiling point. Now, many blame his movement for being responsible, calling it a white man's privileged uh, racism. What do you have to say about it? Sure. I, I don't think anyone would credibly think that Tommy Robinson is from a privileged background. His family is very working class from the fairly poor town of Luton. And I've met many of his followers there in a similar position. So I, I don't think they're privileged. They're certainly not privileged economically. They're not privileged in the law. And the policing, like I say, they're, they're certainly uh, not treated equally in that regard. Uh, I think the, the recent riots have been riots for different reasons. In one case, some Romanian gypsies had uh, a child welfare case. Uh, officials tried to remove the kids from what they said was an abusive home. There were riots demanding their release. There was also an airport incident involving some Muslim citizens who got into a fisticuffs with police. Riots there too. And, and then recently there were these protests that turned violent about the three girls who were killed uh, by a knife man. So you have three different sets of protests, riots, demonstrations. All of them were tied, tied to real events. So I don't know how Tommy Robinson could be blamed for any of those events I've just described. There were race riots, you know, there've been race riots in the UK for decades actually. Um, Tommy Robinson's point would be, look at how the police conducted themselves. They relented in the case of the child welfare agent. They relented in the case of the Manchester police. But when it came to the white working class Brits, Brits protesting of the three girls who were killed, the police came out with the baton. So I, I, I don't think it's realistic to say that Tommy Robinson uh, was the root of any of these riots. The UK is having a lot of problems right now because there are a lot of people that come to the UK from other cultures and other countries that don't really integrate, that don't follow the rule of law and, and, and make Britain the center of their world. And now many immigrants do. I mean, I, I refer again to Rishi Sunak. I didn't particularly like him as a prime minister, but he he is such a model immigrant, wouldn't you say his family? Like they came to the UK, they did well, they obviously love the country. So you can come to the UK and be a, a great patriotic Brit, but unfortunately not all immigrants choose that path. All right, now let me also talk about uh, Tommy's movie. It said that Robinson lost a libel case in 2021 because his film Silenced repeats false claims about a Syrian refugee. Many, including Elon Musk, are asking, what did Robinson do uh, that was considered as terrorism, whereas the recent stabbing in Southport has been branded, uh, has not been branded as an act of terror. There are no terror charges pressed uh, on the attacker. That's a very interesting point. Uh, you've asked about a few things. Tommy was sued in a civil case of defamation or libel. And, uh, and he lost that case and he made a movie about it. And now that movie, because it repeats some of the earlier allegations, is subject to contempt of court hearings. That's none, none of that is a police matter. None of that is a criminal matter. It's a civil dispute. And I frankly don't know a lot of details about it, but um, what's incredible is that Tommy was arrested the, um, the evening after his big rally where he showed this movie, he was arrested under the terrorism law, even though they never accused him of any terrorism. So why would they arrest Tommy Robinson under a terrorist law if he didn't do anything terroristic? The answer is that law gives police remarkable powers to arrest someone without a search warrant, to take, without an arrest warrant, to take their phone or other documents without a search warrant, and to ask them questions for six hours that they don't have the right to remain silent to. So they use that anti-terrorism law just to take his phone, arrest him, and grill him with questions he couldn't refuse. So it was actually a perfect example of the abuse of the legal system, two-tier policing. No one has ever accused Tommy Robinson of being a terrorist. So to arrest him under the Terrorism Act shows that police 
are being a little bit, of, more than a little bit abusive. Whereas, as you point out, this uh, 17-year-old accused murderer who stabbed these three girls to death, um, of course, he, I mean, I don't know if that's terrorism, but he certainly has not been charged with terrorism yet. All right. My last question, Ezra, because of your close association with Tommy Robinson, if Tommy says that he's spearheading a movement and calls himself a patriot, how do you assess his act of fleeing from the UK? I'd like you to share your thoughts, uh, keeping in mind how closely you've known Tommy Robinson. Also, do you think that he's a racist as is being claimed in Britain? Oh, I've, I've never seen him say or do anything racist ever. I've known him for 10 years. I've spent a lot of time with him and his friends and his family. He has friends of all different backgrounds. He grew up in Luton, with his, which is a very multiracial town. His best friends in school were, were, were minorities. Uh, I've never in my life ever heard him see any, say anything racist. I just haven't. Um, in terms of fleeing, I know that's a phrase that people have used, but he moved to Spain, I think last year, partly for safety reasons, because he was always under death threats in the UK. Now, he travels back to the UK all the time. As you know, he was there for the big rally on July t uh, 27th. So, um, you know, I, I don't know much about that civil defamation case that, that I referred to, but Tommy's back and forth in the UK all the time. He just lives in Spain now, but I mean, he's been holding rallies in London uh, for months.